have about a day and a half to fill my Montana deer tag. We'll see how that goes. Came down to one of my little spots that, I don't know, I filmed the hunt in here all by myself. Today I got a camera guy though. So if I could kill a whitetail in here filming myself, shoot that bug right there. We better be able to do it as a team, Dale. If we can't, the audience is gonna ask for one or both of us to be fired. So. But if there's anything more fun than being in, in the whitetail woods, sitting in creek bottoms in November during the rut, let me know what it is. Because even if I don't see one I wanna shoot, usually I see three or four bucks kind of goofing off, acting ruddy and crazy, so. Follow along, see what we got. Well, we're in a very busy piece of public land. You can tell by how well the trail is packed down, but somebody got one this weekend. Blood trail here. Cool. in here elk hunting but he did talk about the fact that he filled his whitetail tag the other day on a nice buck guess I'm a couple days late he's a nice guy good for him oh well off we go the science to this. What it is is there's some big rivers that run through these mountains and then you have drainages, little creeks that come up <clears throat> and I just walk up them and uh, try to find the ridge. It gives me the best glassing opportunity. I've hunted every one of these ridges here. <laughs> I found that this tree right here is the best glassing spot. There's a lot of traffic here, so it might not be the best deer hunting spot. There's deer traffic. I think people scare a lot of them off, but it's the best spot to glass where you can see a lot of stuff, so that's why I sit here. There's a reason you bring a sharp-eyed camera guy with you on a spotting episode like this. He said, oh, there's a deer. And I looked and there's a little two or three point right down there in the bottom. Little buck. The downside is we're about 200 yards from the property line. And I can see the fence there. I think he's about 10 yards on the wrong side of the fence. Two young bucks down there, they're 
Uh oh, boom. Somebody shot something. Two bucks down here that I'd say are two year olds. Two and a half. Little four points. They look like twins. But I need three and a half. I just. I know what it is. I just don't want to shoot a two and a half year old. I could fill my tag right there at 160 yards. And I could hand Dale the rifle and he could fill his tag. We could get a twofer. But they just need to be a little bit older. That's a good sign though. Saw two buck moving the drainage. Usually what you see here is they cross over the ridges and then they come up or down. Then they cross over into the next drainage, go up or down. Next year that one will be a shooter. Both of them might be shooters next year. But the longer timed one, he'll be a shooter next year. He'll be, I don't know, big enough. If nothing else, they let you pass the time. Give you something to look at, think about. The temptation is dangling in front of you. Ooh, Randy, you could have filled your deer tag. You could be home sipping hot coffee right now. Your wife said that if you came home early, she was gonna make you blueberry pancakes, bacon. Scrambled eggs, OJ, and pumpkin bars. But no, I don't fill my deer tag. I let them just walk off into the deep blue yonder. And now my wife is at home eating her own blueberry pancakes and bacon, coffee, and orange juice. While I'm up here in the wind, shiver. Why we hunt. One of the things about hunting places like this is you know you're right on the margin of whitetail habitat. So you see a two and a half, three and a half, even a four and a half year old buck here. They're not going to have that big of antlers. They just, this isn't like feed grounds of the Midwest. This is just a tough place for a deer to make a living. So, I'm not here looking for some big whopper of any sort. Mostly just looking for a white tail of what I think is three and a half years by judging the body size. Another thing that I don't do on public land like this is I don't shoot white tail does. And I know some people are going to be like, you're crazy. There's enough private places that are begging people to come and shoot white-tail does. That's usually where I go if I'm going to shoot white-tail does. And uh, one of the reasons is, is the more does in these little pockets of public, the more bucks. I'm a little bit worried today. I've not seen a doe. Usually I'll see five or six does in each of these little drainages. I've not seen a doe in here today, and that's what brings the bucks in, keeps them traveling back and forth, so. We're about four and a half hours into this thing. Got about another five, five and a half hours to go. Let's see, you just never know when they're gonna show up. That's the beauty of November. You can look at this 150 times and not see anything and all of a sudden poof, here he comes walking through the trees over the ridge up the drainage you just never know so you stick it out well folks here's what you do when you get bored or maybe desperate call it what you want so i made a little loop over here i found two does and a fawn down in this little pocket. I think there are other deer to the north of us here down in this low spot because it's out of the wind. The wind died down right now, but earlier it was really chucking. 
So, I'm going to leave my rifle here with Dale, the camera guy, who also has a tag and who is also wearing his orange vest. I'm leaving him the GoPro so that if it gets really western, he can just hit the record button on the GoPro and it'll record his audio, if nothing else. And while I leave him here, I'm going west till I hit the public-private property line. And I'm going north along that boundary till I get to the corner. And then when I get to the corner, I'm going to cut east. And I'm going to be right out here. And I'm just going to zigzag. And there's going to be just a herd of deer running through here. Or if not, at least it's going to eliminate the thought in my mind that the deer are just over there. So, either way, it's worth the time. It's 12, 12.30. You just go do stupid things like this. You never know when they're gonna work out. Bring in a trekking pole ball. they'd be in here. They're here. I just got to chase them the right direction. I know what we're gonna do if the host has better footage than the camera guy on his cell phone. I've been 10 to 30 yards behind those deer for the last, I don't know, half hour. There's three does there. I've been walking along behind them like I've been trailing sheep. I got footage from eight, 10, 30 yards all my footage is within 30 yards with a cell phone. But the wind's blowing so hard, as long as I stayed downwind of them, and then they tried to come out right here. I don't know if you saw them right there. And then they got right downwind from you and they're like, and so that's, that's when they moved over. But even smelling you, they're like, yeah. I just make a little turn. I've never seen anything like that. But my idea was they, they were stopping and squatting and peeing. I think there's a little button buck in there, but I picked them up over here where I left them earlier and they left so much pee inside. My theory is a buck's gonna cut that trail and come out right there and we'll put the drop on him. Kapoom! So after all this, finally glassed up a, a doe, bedded over there about, I don't know, 450 yards probably. I think she got harassed all night. Her eyes are closed and she's doing this. She had a long, hard night. Okay, Mr. Buck. Where are you at? I don't know where he went to. He was headed right into that thick brush where those two does were bedded. Crud. Maybe he'll come this way. We only have about for shooting line left. In about 30 minutes, if that. Come on, buddy, get out of here. 
he looked like a little bit better buck than the other one. There he is. There he is. He's right where those toes are. Yeah. He's a bit better buck. You see him running around down there. Behind that string of evergreens. Come on, pal. Well, about 20 minutes ago, I saw a buck working his way up there. He's a better buck, but he's one drainage over, and I think he just put the slip on us. We're down to just about no filming light, and only about 10, 15 minutes of legal shooting light. So we're gonna start gathering up our gear and walk out of here. Got one more day to try to fill my Montana deer tag. Maybe I shouldn't be so picky. Could have shot one of those two this morning. And uh, I thought about going meal deer hunting tomorrow. But then I saw this buck, it's like, mm, dang, they just didn't want me to go meal deer hunting. They want to sucker me back into this spot for another day. So I don't know, we'll see. I'll decide when I get to that interstate exit and say, am I going this way or am I going to go the other way? Dang it. Thanks for watching, folks. Wish we, uh, Wish we had Big Hank laying here for you, but we don't. Dang it. Shun of a gun.